Welcome back to Honda Garage Idaho. In today's video, we are going to be back at the suspension on our 2011 Honda CRZ. Today, we're swapping out the OEM rubber top mounts on our front struts with these camber top mounts made by Fortune Auto. These are compatible with our CRZ, and I believe also they're compatible with all three generations of the Honda Fit in the US. So what are these top mounts really for? On your factory suspension, you've got two bolts holding your strut to the knuckle. And with aftermarket camber bolts, you can get a degree and a half or so each way adjusting the top side of that knuckle attachment. Some aftermarket coilovers also have slotted top holes to give you even more adjustment on your front camber. Now for most people, that should be perfectly fine. If you're setting up a daily vehicle and just want a good alignment or you want maybe an extra degree or two negative for some spirited driving, the amount of adjustment available on the strut to knuckle location, maybe with a set of camber bolts, is plenty for a lot of people. However, there are a few circumstances where you might need more camber than that system can allow. For example, maybe you're going for a stance build. I'm sorry, we'll be praying for your speedy recovery. Or perhaps you are building a track vehicle and you really want to maximize your cornering potential. That's a great use case for this. In my particular case, I do want to have a few degrees of camber for some potential autocross use. However, my vehicle was previously wrecked and it's not possible with camber bolts to even get past perfect zero camber. So right now I've got a set installed and my, my wheels are aligned still vertically. That's as far as they can get. So if I want any more negative camber, I'm going to have to go this route to get a few more degrees out and really dial in that fitment. Now running two camber bolts per side is technically an option, but it's not a very safe one. You run a lot of risk of one of the two bolts slipping or even breaking off because you have a lot less bolt diameter there between your strut and your knuckle. So I've got Fortune Auto Solution. There's also a version I believe made by Honed uh, that might be a little less expensive. I picked these because they're blue. Um, either way, it is a rather expensive part to install, so do make sure that it's actually necessary for your build. If you're just looking for a degree or two of negative camber for a little bit better handling, try bolts first on the top side and see if that gets you where you need to go. Now one major thing to know about replacing the top hats with these for camber adjustment versus your stock stuff is that these are all metal construction and that's going to make a big difference in ride noise. The factory has a lot of rubber components that do a lot of absorption as the suspension moves around, a lot of vibration canceling. Um, helps keep it quieter in the cabin when stuff is flexing around a bit. Not so with these. Everything is 100% metal uh, and there's spherical bearings and stuff so it's not going to be a problem construction wise but you are going to notice a lot harsher noise there's going to be no dampening of the vibration you're going to have a lot more direct transfer of that from the suspension right into the cabin so do keep that in mind so with all that out of the way let's take a look at what it takes to install the fortune auto camber top mounts in our honda crz okay let's start by taking a look at what you're going to receive when you actually order this kit so first up we have obviously the camber upper assemblies these have a nice large locking ring that will secure this to the body there's actually multiple pieces built in here that we'll disassemble a bit later and see how they attach to the shock uh, on the strut. We also have a tool for tightening those lock rings and that's got a spot to put a wrench in here for some leverage as well as a couple holes for hex nuts. For example, these top nuts that are included, these are the right size to fit through this bearing inside the top mount. So that's going to be a very specific diameter and height. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you keep a good eye on those. Additionally, we have some other machine parts here. These are going to go on the bottom of our top mounts. They fit in this way. And those uh, will center our spring top hats. We also have included a couple of dampening adjuster knobs. These I think are specific to the Fortune Auto coilovers. Um, and finally, our actual spring top hats. These have a little plastic uh, ring right here for the spring seat, and these are going to mount on top of our spring. Now let's take a look at specifically what you need to know for the spring. So we are required to use the spring top hats that Fortune Auto includes, but they're not going to be compatible with all coilovers. You need to make sure that your spring diameter is the same diameter as this top hat, and the Fortune Auto ones are about 85 millimeters across. So unfortunately the Tane coilovers that I'm running now have a larger diameter spring that will not fit that seat. 
You could always make a custom one, I suppose, if you wanted to, but I'm actually going to use these BC Racing coilovers that I picked up from a fellow CRZ owner. Those do have the correct diameter spring that will work with this top hat system. Okay, now regardless of which brand of coilover you choose, as long as it has a compatible spring diameter here, do make sure you have your instructions handy, your paperwork, or can find them online, because since we are replacing this top hat here, removing the original one and installing the Fortune Auto one, we need to ensure that we have our instructions handy for resetting the spring preload. This is different from the ride height, and you will definitely want to get that correct as part of your suspension rebuild, so make sure that you have access to that information. Let's look at how this installs real quick. So this is going to be our first out of the metal hardware that we use. This gets inserted into our spring top mount here. We're going to insert it from the top side opposite where the spring will sit and slide it right into the center of this bearing. Now that can slide over the threaded rod on our shock and that's going to set the position once this contacts the top of our actual strut here. That's going to set the position of the top end of the spring. So using either the nut that came with the kit or maybe you have one of the original nuts from the shock, we can tighten that down real quick just to hold this on here and then push our spring up next to it and use that to set our preload height before moving on. Okay, now let's take a look at our camber top mount here in more detail. So we've got our locking ring on top. This is the only thing that's gonna sit in the engine bay side. All of this is gonna be under the frame. And removing that, we can see the four bolts right here. These are five millimeter Allen uh, that we use for the adjustment. So this bottom section is gonna slide. Uh, as it comes, it's locked dead center. And we'll see that there is a channel on this side for this bottom part to slide. However, with the layout of the bolts here right now, it's currently basically locked in place. Uh, there's a little lip in here that is preventing it from sliding farther. So as you can see, the actual bolts that we're gonna be using to adjust the camber are gonna be on the wheel well side of the chassis, so you actually can't access them with the whole strut bolted up. That's gonna make alignment a bit more tricky and time consuming because you'll have to undo the lock ring, drop this down, adjust these, tighten it back up, see how it looks. Um, what I think I'm going to do is just get this in a general good spot and then use a set of camber bolts on the bottom of the struts to fine tune the angle. Um, that is what I would suggest, but depending on where you're getting your alignment done and how steeply you need to set it, that may change. So with our 5mm Allen key, let's remove these four bolts here and keep disassembling. Okay, with those out of the way, we can more easily see that channel that's been cut for the actual adjustment. And here is what's going to mount to the top of our strut next. This raised ring around here is going to slide in that channel to give us adjustment. And we'll face it this way for when we're getting negative camber, just so we don't have any issues contacting other metal on the vehicle here. But that's about as far as our adjustment reaches. Now we do have two bolts per side here, but you'll see there are four holes. So when you're going to line this up, we're going to use two on each side. And if you really have to slide it quite a bit farther, you can change which holes the bolts are threaded through to maximize the adjustment. So before we mount this to the top of our strut, we're actually going to disassemble it again, split these two pieces off. And these are 4mm hex bolts right here. Okay, so this is going to be the first part that we mount onto our strut here. This is going to slide partially onto the thinner section of this metal piece that we installed with the spring top hat. And we're going to keep this curved section facing down toward the spring and install it just like this. Then we can pass the included top nut through the other side of this spherical bearing and tighten this down onto the strut. Now my plan is to torque this top nut to 34 foot-pounds, the same as the original one would have been. And we can use a 5 millimeter Allen key to keep this from spinning. Alright, now we can reinstall our other plate here. Now there were no instructions included with my kit, so I don't know if there's an official torque spec these need to meet, but I'm just going to tighten them as far as I can with my extended Allen wrench here. Okay, so I'm going to hold it facing this way. This is going to be the inside of the vehicle toward the center of the engine bay. And looking at this bottom hole here on either side, and then the third one, if we line this up dead center and we put the bolts in there, that's going to give us a perfect zero camber alignment, at least for the top hat. 
So we can slide it a little ways here with those bolts in that position. Or if we move them to the 2 and 4 bolts, we can slide it even farther. And this is about the max, again, this being on the inside of the vehicle. <clears throat> I'm going to go for a pretty aggressive camber setup, so I'm going to start off with my bolts in the top holes, uh, as I showed earlier, and slid all the way. So you can see that puts the center of the strut way off to the actual center of the body mount. Now in terms of actual degrees of negative camber, I don't know exactly what this is going to get me. Again, I didn't receive any documentation with my kit, so I'm going to start it off at just the maximum I can get. Uh, with this plus the camber bolts that I have plus the slots in the BCs and uh, I'll take it to an alignment shop and see what their numbers show for the current kit before I dial it into the number I need. On the vehicle side of course we're going to start off by removing our wheel and then the original strut that's in there now in my case the tank coil over. I'm not going to go over that whole specific procedure here I've got a separate video on removing and replacing the front struts if you'd like more detail on that. So here's the rubber portions of the factory top mount as well as this bearing, that's all getting replaced now. There is a lot more clearance in here without the fenders installed. Uh, you could also probably remove this cowling to get a lot easier access on this side for the wrench. Now as you're starting to tighten this ring down, you're going to get to a point where it's going to try and spin the inside mount too. You can see it moving right in here. And it's going to be really important to keep in mind the direction of your camber. So you will want the direction that this slides to be perfectly perpendicular to the center line of the vehicle uh, because that is the direction that you're going to be adjusting this way for your camber so you want the slide to be lined up with that. I also don't have any particular torque value that I'm going for here. I'm just going to get it as tight as I can so it'll squeeze up against the factory strut mount on the frame without any room to wiggle. Okay, bit of an installation. <sighs> Okay, bit of an interesting installation process, not 100% sure how it's going to work out, but I've got everything bolted back together and semi-torqued for now, so I'm going to get this back down on the ground, and everything is maxed out on the top mounts, on the camber bolts, and the slotted holes, so we're going to see how much negative that gives us total, and then we'll take it up to my alignment shop, and we'll kind of dial it in from there, get both sides matched up. Once the car is down on the ground and the suspension is fully loaded, double check the tightness on the top rings. Alright, so here's the results. To be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed. It doesn't look as steep as I thought it would be for maxing everything out. It could be that using the camera bolt in the bottom location instead of the top is not helping me very much or some just little misconfiguration. It looks like we're at three, maybe a little bit more degrees, which is more than the bolts would have given me. Uh, but again, just for how far those top hats moved, I would have expected a bit more. So we'll take it to the alignment shop, see what kind of numbers they can give me, and hopefully get the fitment dialed in. A little bit firmer ride. Uh, I definitely wouldn't say harsh necessarily, uh, and I think that's mostly attributed to the BC coilovers, just having a harder spring rate versus the tains. Um, I also am not really noticing any extra noise from the top hats uh, being metal versus rubber. Going over a few small bumps and stuff, it doesn't seem any louder or more vibration-y than the stock ones were, so that's good. I am starting to wonder if I shot myself in the foot a little bit doing the camera bolts on the bottom. I flipped them around to face the other way from where they were in the top and I thought that would work, but going over in my mind now, I'm thinking that the geometry of how everything pivots, uh, that might have ended up hurting. So I'm going to draw a little diagram and see if maybe that's why the camber doesn't look as steep as it should be. Okay, as we see here, I've laid out some two-scale engineering schematics that I came across. So we've got our knuckle here with the hub. This is our strut assembly, and then our control arm down here, which for all intents and purposes is going to remain fixed uh, level or horizontal. 
So let's look at what happens when we adjust various mounting points on the suspension. What camber bolts allow us to do is adjust the position of the knuckle within the strut itself. So keeping this pivoting at the top side here, if we keep our bottom factory bolt in place, but we use a camber bolt to put the actual pivot point back here. Now this is exaggerated obviously, but that does give us a slight bit of camber just by pushing the top of the knuckle backward and keeping this mounting point the same. So now let's say we replace our factory top hat assembly with this aftermarket one and this pushes the mounting point for the upper end of the strut back here quite a bit farther. Now if we were to go back to using two OEM bolts right here, our knuckle as a result should have to rotate a bit back already to meet those mounting points again. And now let's say we add a slotted top mount into the equation so we can push this bolt even farther back here. The mistake that I've potentially made is putting a camber bolt here in the bottom spot because even though I flipped it around so it's pushing the knuckle forward this way, if I put a camber bolt in the top and push that even farther and pivot it around this point instead, I may see a more drastic change here. Anyway, I hope that somewhat helps visualize what I'm dealing with. I think that could be my issue and maybe switching the camber bolt back to the top slotted area will give me the most adjustment. Uh, so I'm going to have to play with the brake bracket a bit more to try and get that to fit, but let's see how it turns out. I did end up pulling the suspension back apart and moving the camber bolts back to the top side, making sure they were installed correctly. I'm not going to go into the details of how camber bolts work here, but if you would like me to do a separate video on that and learn more in detail how those are installed, let me know in the comments. Uh, I did switch those back to the top and they made a little bit of difference, but not much, so I ended up getting to my alignment shop. And once we had it up on their machine, we actually determined that the control arms were the issue. The one on my driver's side is an aftermarket one and is slightly the wrong length, actually. So that was causing issues where we couldn't get that driver's side strut to really move much in terms of camber. Anyway, I'm going to go back to looking at just the Fortune Auto top hats kind of in a vacuum. I think I'm going to save the control arms for their own dedicated video later because there is a lot to go over specifically on those. Um, so as far as the top hats go, I think my disappointment was a little misplaced, uh, just not being able to get the adjustment I needed, and it wasn't the top hat's fault. At the end of the day, they did work as advertised, although I will say I was disappointed with the lack of information on their website without published camber specs that they could meet or any installation instructions that I could find that was a bit of a letdown for the cost. I will say though, they are really nice quality. Uh, you get a ton of really well machined parts here. The finish is really good. The installation ended up being pretty straightforward and I do love that you don't have to do any modification to the car, no cutting of the strut towers, no drilling, nothing. It is pretty straightforward, so I will give them props for that. All in all, on the good side with the good control arm, I ended up at a little over negative three degrees, so factoring out the bolts and the slotted struts, I would say the Fortunato top hats ended up giving me probably about a degree extra, if not a little bit more. A lot of people that are doing track or autocross builds do end up switching to metal or pillow ball top mounts anyway from the likes of Cusco or Beat Rush, something like that. Um, because getting rid of the factory rubber top mounts with metal in general, even if you're not looking to add extra camber, does give you a lot more performance benefit by eliminating any slop and wiggle that the factory rubber parts do have. So at the end of the day, they're installed. It wasn't too difficult. I think the price they're asking for this particular kit is justified. It's a really well put together kit. I can't say I'd recommend it for a lot of people. I'd definitely go camber bolts first and aftermarket coilovers that have a little bit more leeway and see if that gets you where you need to be. But all in all, I'm okay with the installation. I'm satisfied with them. I think once I get my control arm issue figured out, they will help me dial in the specific camera that I'm looking for. So that's about all I've got. I hope the information that I put together in this video was helpful for you. Again, keep an eye out in the future for that control arm specific video. I'm going to go into a lot more detail there. And until then, thank you so much for watching.